Well, the tank has played a unique role in warfare. Without the tank and its mobility and its gun power and its armour, none of the victories would have been possible. The tank is arguably one of the greatest military advances of the 20th century. This film tells the story of how the tank has transformed warfare, dramatically rewriting military strategy and tactics in the process. But how did cavalry evolve from mammal to machine? Since the ancient world, great battles have been fought and won with the support of the horse. Crimea sees the use of shock tactics on the battlefield. The Inniskillings lead a powerful charge against a huge force of Russian Cossacks. But the days of horse cavalry are numbered. The 20th century brings barbed wire, artillery and machine guns. The horse is at last outmatched. To win, you must adapt. Cavalry would have to evolve to survive. It's 1914. The Allied forces seek to overcome the stalemate of trench warfare on the front lines. They would need protection from German machine gun fire, mobility to overcome rough terrain and barbed wire, firepower against infantry and their defences. It was from these simple building blocks that the Mark I tank, nicknamed Big Willie, was born. Warfare had changed forever. I think the Germans were very astonished because the original use of the tanks was a great surprise. And even in 1980, parties of Germans would pop out of trenches uh, and surrender if there was a tank which was firing down the trench. Just as technology had evolved to destroy the trench, tanks had to evolve to destroy each other. By World War II, entirely new tactics had to be created for these great war machines. Tactics like the German Blitzkrieg. Combining a mass tank charge with infantry support and attack from the air, the German Lightning War was a fearsome and deadly sight. Learning from the mistakes of the First World War, it was realized that classes of tanks were needed to deal with different situations. The reduced armor of the light tank increases mobility, making them perfect for scouting. In 1940, the Inniskilling Dragoon Guards used the light Mark 6B for reconnaissance. But when the Inniskilling Dragoons returned to Europe in 1944, they had medium tanks like the British Cromwell. These were more heavily armoured than the Mark 6B, enabling them to fight other tanks. The German Tigers were slow, but very heavily armoured. Ideal for supporting infantry, these heavy tanks were used to shatter strong defensive lines. By the middle of the war, tanks were engaged in strategic battles across Europe. In Kursk, 6,000 armoured vehicles face off in the greatest tank battle ever. In the North African desert, British tanks are victorious against the German and Italian forces led by Rommel. In France, the Allies advance across Europe following the D-Day invasion. They force the German army back through Europe. It's 1945. The war is over. But the arms race between the Soviets and the Western powers across the Iron Curtain begins. It's the start of the Cold War. Fear of another world war hangs over both sides. Each struggles to develop increasingly heavier tanks in case war breaks out. The Soviets produced T-54s and T-62s in mammoth numbers and the British developed more sophisticated tanks in response. The Centurion, the Chieftain, and the Challenger. I think the most significant advances have been in the range of engagement and the armor piercing capability. 
of tanks. Uh, had the Cold War suddenly become hot, we could have seen off uh, nearly all the Russian tanks without any problem. Technology is still developing. The creation of the helicopter gunship has opened up fresh strategic options on the battlefield. Its mobility and gun power make the helicopter a powerful addition to the team. In just a century, cavalry has changed beyond recognition. It has continued to evolve and adapt, remaining a force to be reckoned with. There is no doubt, in my mind, that the tank will go on. But there are those who try and say that the day of the tank is over. I would dispute that because it is the heart of that team, the all-armed team, which are the battle winners.